Okay, welcome to Introduction to Sociology. Um, I would like to start out by writing some stuff here for you, talking about a few things about sociology as we begin our uh, study of sociology. And um, this is something I do with all my students at the very beginning of the semester, and this will be a very common theme over the, the, the next several weeks in my classes. Um, and so, um, as you, you know, started getting your, your head wrapped around, you know, what are we talking about in sociology, the study of society? Well, you know, what do we consider as society? And I have a uh, perspective that, um, that I bring to my teaching sociology that I want to go on and share with you today. So you'll have an idea about my mindset as to how we think about sociology and uh, the study of society. So, you know, society as we know it today has not been around, you know, all of human history. It's something that has developed over time, that it's evolved over time and continues to evolve. But in modern day society, even in the last um, uh, 100 plus years or so, we do see some very common themes in society. And this is not just common theme to where you live, but it's very common theme across our globe. So, you know, many, many cultures have evolved into societies. There still are a few smaller cultures in the world, but by and large, most people live in a society on the planet, whether it's a big city, a village, a small city, urban, rural, most people live in society, okay? So the common themes that I wanna to bring to your consideration as we start thinking and talking about sociology this semester are what is, are called social institutions. Now, if you look in your textbook, social institutions don't appear until around chapter four, around the chapter on social interaction, the chapter on groups and organizations. The idea of social institutions for me are so profound in studying society and understanding the organization of society that I start talking about social institutions day one. Okay, so let's do that. So when we think about social institutions, there are some primary social institutions. Now, not all social life is found under these institutions, but these uh, together, uh, individually and together form to make social structure in modern society. And these social institutions are family, religion, government, the economy, media, health, and I'm gonna come back over here and write education. Now, these social institutions are not necessarily physical structures. Now, there may be, may be physical, and st physical structures involved in those social institutions, but let me give an example of why it's not only physical, right? In terms of education, you know, some people go into a physical building. I have a seven-year-old daughter that is in elementary school right now in a physical building. If you are watching this video from home or um, from work, I mean, you may be in a physical building, but those aren't necessarily considered educational institutions. You know, what we know to be education in 2020, 21, 22, 23, is a, a, a um, substantial virtual component. Um, but again, these are not only not physical always, but they're also not always virtual. They're social institutions. And so the same can be said about all of these, okay? These together again form what we call social structure. And I'm gonna write that up here at the very top, social structure. And so, certainly for young people, family is the most important institution. As you get older, perhaps 
the economy becomes very important. Maybe it's not as important as the family, but you know, we know that one reasons why family, one reason why family stays together is their ability to manage finances. And that's something that's part of the economy. So you can begin to see how these work together, okay, to promote solidarity and stability, but it's also where conflict can be found in our society. So now we're talking a little bit about theory, and we'll get to that. Um, we'll get to that in uh, the next video. So, social institutions. Okay, again, these are modern social institutions. So one of the things that we're going to cover when we talk about sociocultural evolution is hunting and gathering societies, pastoral societies, and. I often don't don't like to use those terms because they're not really societies. They're more like groups, okay? So over time, these small groups have grown larger and larger, and they form a society of many, many groups, okay? And so groups are a, an important part of society, okay? We have lots of different kinds of groups. Um, in a few weeks, we'll be talking about groups and organizations because they're such an important part of the organization of society, okay? And so, where do we find individuals? Well, you don't have a society without people, right? But the study of sociology is more than just about the individual. It's about all people. Particularly, when you look at society that's made up of a lot of different people, there can be a lot of different types of societies. There could be a lot of different types of groups within society. And so that's certainly important to understanding societies, to understanding groups, and certainly understanding people. Now where psychology fits into this, psychology largely studies this, okay? Uh, in sociology, we study this and this to get to this. Now there are different perspectives, and let's talk about that for a moment. There's micro-level sociology that looks at society this way. There's different types of practices of sociology. So we call this micro-level. So in order to understand society, you have to understand individuals. So there's a field of study where sociology and psychology come together called social psychology. I teach a class called social interaction that is a mix of uh, sociology and psychology, social psychology. So social psychology takes a little bit from sociology and some from psychology, okay? Now on the other end of the spectrum here, we have macro sociology. Now here, we study people by studying society. And so here we study this, and now the arrows come back this way. Now, one is not necessarily better than the other, the micro-level approach or the macro-level approach. Depending on the social phenomena, the individual phenomena that we're studying, it may be better to look at it from a macro perspective or from a micro perspective. Looking at the pandemic right now in terms of masks and vaccines and who will wear masks and who doesn't want to wear masks, you can really see how even that plays out in terms of micro and macro sociology. We maybe talk, talk about that a little bit more later on. Okay? So, uh, again, I wanted to take a few minutes to talk about this. Um, certainly at the start of a semester, this is very important from my perspective for you to understand and for you to think about. Because this is how I approach sociology and it's how your assignments and your work is going to be framed in terms of what you do, the content that, that you will be uh, presented with and what you'll study. All right, so that's it for this particular short lecture. And uh, I'll talk about theory in the next lecture.